Lord. Praise the Lord. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Okay. So uh, today's message is going to be the restoration uh, from the captivity or uh, from the I mean the need of the uh, 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 the Christians here today. So as I informed you last week, uh, uh, this message is going to be the sermon a series uh, for this month. And uh, the last Sunday we discussed about many points based on uh, our main title named uh, uh, Restoration, the Need of Christian uh, Church Today. And uh, the points like uh, we were discussing about the word restoration and uh, the introduction to the book of Ezra and the uh, captivity of Israel and the reasons of their captivity and uh, uh, God's provisions to come out of the I mean captivity, uh, and I believe it is there in your in your in your notebook. If you have a, a practice of making a systematic note for the I mean for the sermons, and if you don't have that practice, I encourage you today. Uh, please take a paper or a or a book, or even uh, you can use your cell phone or laptop or iPad. Uh, keep a record of that messages. And I know uh, the majority of our people have that practice of uh, 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 writing or noting down all the uh, points and the messages and everything. Uh, I'm so happy about that. But I see some people are simply sitting and watching. And uh, I thank God for your memory power because uh, even if you're not writing down, you're getting everything. I, I believe that just to encourage you, I said. I mean, also uh, God bless you for taking a new decision today that uh, you are going to write down all the points that we are preaching, I mean, in our Sunday, I mean, service, not only on the Sunday services, in all the other, I mean, services, we have to note it down because, I mean, we do not have that, uh, that much memory power to, to remember all those points, but it is very uh, good practice to take it down in a, in a paper or in your mobile phone or in your device or somewhere. You take it down and you can go through that portions maybe after a few days and maybe later. Okay, so I don't know what about the people, those who are uh, whose uh, I mean videos are off, and if you are uh, if your videos are not on, I don't know what you're doing there, and whether I don't know you are not there or no. Or, okay, so uh, anyway, let us all uh, sit in the presence of God with a prayerful attitude, and now uh, today let us I mean briefly think about the necessary Christian areas of restoration, the necessary Christian areas of restoration. That means the areas where the restoration is necessary. The areas where the restoration is necessary. So the first area uh, where the restoration is necessary is in the restoration from the captivity. I mean, so we have been I mean, speaking about the restoration is the need of the Christian church today. So now we are thinking about, I mean, which is the area that we need to be restored or restoration from the captivity. That is the first point. So the first area where the people of God are in the need of restoration is the restoration from the captivity. So actually, when I preach about this point, uh, please do not misunderstand me that I'm uh, saying that we all are in a literal state of captivity uh, or something. Uh, actually, I didn't say it never in, the, in that way because I know and I'm well aware about all the people those who are sitting here uh, are basic uh, having the basic Christian uh, uh, faith in you, and also uh, some of you are coming from the uh, uh, from a kind of orthodox, uh, I mean, Christian background. So you know everything from the Bible, and uh, that's the reason I am not going to say that. Okay, literally, you all are uh, under a bondage, or you are under a. a, a, a slavery or, a, uh, or a, a, a situation of captivity. But my focus through uh, this message is not merely to accuse or blame uh, anybody about uh, uh, your failure in some of the areas uh, of your Christian life. Rather, I'm trying to find out if there is a single point or a single aspect amen, where we feel that we are not able to come out of the situation of the bondage or slavery. You know, you have to think one thing, you know, there are failures in the people's life. There are weakness in the people's life. There are some kind of points that they are under the bondage, okay? They are under the slavery, okay? We have been singing that song today in, in English song, it says that, okay, we are no longer under fear. 
because we are the children of God. That is true. That is true. And no, I would like to tell you something that even we have to understand which is the place and which is the area and which is the situation that we feel that, I mean, we are under something. I mean, so this is the situation of the, of the people today. And I would like to help such people to come uh, overcome the situation where you feel that still even after becoming a Christian, you feel, oh, I am under something and I am under somebody and I am not able to come out of the, out of uh, those kinds of, uh, I mean, strongholds of Satan. You know, there are some places that, I mean, Satan is trying to, I mean, press us to, I mean, down and Satan is trying to, I mean, capture us. And Satan is always, I mean, like to, I mean, take us to the bondage or take us to the slavery or take us to the captivity. But we have to understand how can we overcome that situation? How can we overcome that problems? And how can we overcome that crisis in our life? I mean, so in our Christian life also, when we feel that I am under something and I am uh, under the I mean, control of something and somebody, I mean, and I mean, I'm not able to come out of that, that situation. And maybe I mean, come out of the strongholds of Satan. I mean, so we have to think about how can I come out of that situation? How can I come out of that slavery? How can I come out of the captivity? So this morning, let me encourage you this morning as we just begin the second session of our message today on restoration, the need of Christian, I mean, a Christian church today, that God is going to make great transformation in our attitude and in our feelings. We need a transformation. We need a, a great change in our attitude and also in our feeling. You know, of course, Satan and the worldly strongholds may press you down and say, you cannot overcome your failures and you cannot overcome the fear and the terror and the snare of the trapper and the deadly pestilence. Praise God. Let me repeat that sentence again and again that you are dwelling under the shelter of the Most High and under the shadow of the Almighty God. If you are staying under the shadow of the Almighty God, there is nothing to be fear about. But this morning, let me tell you, if you feel that, oh Lord, I'm not under the, I mean, under the shadow of the almighty God, or I'm, I mean, having some kind of captivity in my life, and I'm having some kind of, uh, I mean, what is that, I mean, bondages or slavery in my life, in any areas of my life, then this morning, Lord, I would like to come back to the Lord, and I need to be revived according to the, I mean, Psalms that we were reading today. I mean, so that is what we are, I mean, going to look into. And I believe that the Holy Spirit will enable us to overcome the captivated areas of life and to come out of the stress and the depression and God will restore us and re he will reestablish us to be useful for the expansion of God's kingdom in this new year. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, no, we, we have to know one thing. The Holy Spirit will strengthen you. I believe that. Personally, I believe that. This new year, I mean, there are some areas that we are captivated. There are some areas that we are feeling very stressed and depressed and everything. But we need a restoration. We need to be reestablish our Christian life. And then only we will be useful for the expansion of the kingdom of God. I mean, so now let me tell you uh, what the Bible says about the areas of our life where we need to be restored. Then there are some areas that we need to be restored. So let us see which are the areas that we need to be restored. Actually, uh, there, there, is a, there is a misunderstanding among uh, most of the Christians today that as soon as a person believe in Jesus and get baptized in the water, they become a perfect Christian. I mean, this is a mis misunderstanding. Some people believe and some people think that as soon as we, as soon as a person believe in Jesus Christ and get baptized in the water, they become a perfect Christian and nothing to be done to get the eternal life and to enter into the heaven. So let me tell you that that is absolutely a misunderstanding. Thinking in that way, that is misunderstanding. It is true that we are Christians. It is true that we came to Christ and it is true that, I mean, we are the children of God at the same time, 
there are some area there are some i mean i mean places where we are not able to come out of the captivity there are some areas i mean from where we are not able to come out of that situation i mean it is true that they think that like we are perfect we are perfect christian i mean nothing to be done i mean to get the eternal life and eternal uh, maybe enter into heaven because we are the children of god and we are born again and we are i mean we got the salvation and we are called the children of god and let me ask you one to question if everything's become all right and perfect when we get salvation then why god appointed the prophets and the priests and the apostles and the pastors and the teachers in the christian church for example you think that okay and we believe that okay if i am a saved person if i am a born again person then everything is perfect if you think in that way okay and if you if you believe that okay i mean i am i'm becoming a right person and perfect person when i got salvation then what is the need of appointing the prophets or priests or apostles pastors and teachers in the christian church there is no need of them if everything becomes all right and perfect when we get salvation then why correction and why proof reproof and why the edification and the exhortation is necessary in the christian churches i was thinking about these things i mean in the previous day you know we have many options to reprove the people we have many options to correct the people you know there are leaders and there are i mean elders and there are people of god ministers of god i mean who is anointed to reprove the church and there are many people to edify the church of god i mean there are i mean many people to exhort the people of god what is the need of that what is the need of that i mean if everything becomes all right and perfect when we get salvation by the bible give more importance for reading and meditating the word i mean so we are reading and meditating the word daily in our life so what is the need of that okay if you think that okay everything is right and perfect when we get salvation why the bible is giving more importance for reading and meditating the word of god so here we comes to the conclusion that even though we are christians and children of god there are times when we fail to overcome the life crisis and the times when the failures happens and the times when many weakness happens in our life personal life and family life and our social life there are many occasions that we are we we are i mean facing the failure in, in our life i mean we we feel that like we are the children of god but why there are some failures in our life why there are some i mean some i mean places some areas where the crisis is coming in our life i mean then why the weaknesses are coming in our life maybe in our personal life or in our family life or in our social life so this is the reason i said i mean we need these things i mean in our christian life when many a times we are failing to do that so there are situations when we say oh my god i can't handle this problem i mean i can't handle this problem myself and i am not able to come out of my weakness okay i believe that i mean every one of you might have said i mean this word in the presence of god and pray when when we, when we are praying in the presence of god we have said oh lord i mean i'm coming to your presence i'm not able to i mean come out of this i mean i mean this situation and i'm not able to handle this problem with myself and i'm not able to come out of weakness i have some weakness in my life and i feel i'm still under the slavery or captivity of something i mean and there comes the need of the power of god and need of the power of the holy spirit hallelujah if you feel that i mean still i am under the control of something or somebody and if you feel that still i am under the i mean slavery of the captivity of something and if you feel that i mean you have a problem that which cannot solve you I mean that which you cannot solve that problem then there comes the power of the holy spirit there comes the power of god to 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 encourage you to strengthen you in your weak point i mean so let us always trust in the lord to move forward in the coming days hallelujah especially in this new year hallelujah and some people think that everything is fine because they are born into a nominal christian family amen so there are some people they are thinking that okay everything is okay everything is fine because i am born into a nominal christian family 
maybe a Martomite family or uh, maybe a Jacob, I mean, Jacobite family or maybe a Roman Catholic family or a Pentecostal family also, okay, whatever it may be. Okay, so that means as soon as they are born into a Christian family, they believe that automatically the names are recorded in the book of life. I mean, that is mentioned in uh, uh, Revelation chapter 20, verse 15. Revelation chapter 20, verse 15 says, uh, what it says, if, you, if your name is written in the book of life, you are safe. But if your name is not found in the book of life in heaven, you, you will be thrown into the lake of fire. So these people, some kind of people, they are thinking that, okay, I'm fine and I'm okay. I'm a third person because I am a member of a, of a Christian family. Everything is okay. Remember one thing, as a matter of fact, that is absolutely a misunderstanding about the biblical truths. They did not have any idea about the Bible. That is the reason they are thinking, they are thinking in that way. I mean, because Bible clearly says that salvation is absolutely personal and our eternal life is always based on our relationship with God. I mean, salvation is always personal. If you want to if you are believing in Jesus Christ, you are becoming a child of God. Okay, it doesn't mean that okay, your father or your mother is is a, is a, is, a, is believing in Jesus Christ and he is a, he or she is a born again Christian. Then you are also a Christian. No, it is not like that. I mean, salvation is absolutely personal. So you cannot say that okay, you are saved and saved only because your father or mother is Christian. You know, the, the other people, some kind of people, they think that once we were walking in sin, I mean, the other people, the other group of people, they are thinking that, okay, uh, we were walking in sin and uh, in unbelief, but uh, I mean, we believe Jesus and, and he, he is my savior and I accepted Jesus as my, uh, as my, I mean, savior and my Lord. And we accepted him, I mean, and, and we become a Christian and we were given a new heart and go, uh, go on to the, I mean, got on to the right track moving forward. So when they think about restoration, they say, that's what happened to me when I became a Christian. My life was restored on that day and they think that we don't need any more restoration in our life. This is a group of people they are thinking, okay? We are a Christian and we become a Christian. We accepted Jesus as a personal savior and now I am a Christian, I mean? And my life was I mean, restored, we were lost. And now we are found and we, our life is restored onto that day. And they think that we don't need any more restoration in our life. But remember one thing, you know, let us see what is the dictionary meaning of restoration. The rest, I mean, the, the dictionary meaning of restoration. It is there in the screen. You can see that is the act of process of returning something to its original condition by repairing it or cleaning it. What is restoration? I've been giving uh, a definition for the uh, restoration uh, in the previous I mean, Sunday. Uh, that was a spiritual definition for the, uh, for the restoration. But now this is the, uh, I mean, uh, this is one of the uh, definition, uh, dictionary definition uh, and meaning for the restoration. What is that? The act of process of returning something to its original condition by repairing it or cleaning it. So there is a need of, there is a need of repairing, there is a need of cleaning, and there is a need of making that instrument new. Okay, so there is a need of repair. So the restoration is an active process of returning something, or returning something to its original condition by repairing it or cleaning it. I mean, that means the old and the broken down machines are there that need the restoration to become like they were meant to be. I mean, there are some beautiful furnitures you can see, which might become old and damaged, which needs the restoration. I mean, so this I'm speaking about the spiritual meaning of the restoration. What is that? You know, you can see some of the beautiful machines or beautiful furnitures in your house. I mean, that become old. And if that become damaged, then there is a need of restoration. You have to repair it. You have to remold it. And you have to do something with that machine. And you have to do something with that furniture. Then only it will be looking good. I mean, likewise, even people who are lost in sin and not following Jesus 
they need the restoration they need the restoration hallelujah but what about those who are already christians this is my question i mean we know that the people those who are unbelievers they need the restoration they need the restoration because god i mean formed them and god created them in a in a wonderful manner and god has given for the men uh, with the with the, the, the glory of god but they lost their glory when they were falling down from the presence of god i mean so i mean the question is that the question is i mean why the christians need or i mean i mean or what about we the, the so called believers we call ourselves that we are the we are the believers and we are the children of god and we are the christians and my question is i mean what about we the people those who are called as the believers so the so called christian the children of god i mean after we become a christian and get on to the right track are we still in need of restoration this is my question and we are going to we are going to i mean i mean get the answer for the question i mean the question is after we become a christian and get on the right track are we still in the need of restoration in the need of restoration we are not in the need of salvation but we need the restoration i mean make it clear we are not in the need of salvation because we are already saved and we are already i mean born again we don't want any salvation again but we are in the place of restoration we need the restoration back okay so bible says of course we need the restoration in various areas of our christian life now let us i mean come back to the text and the main title of our message do you remember what was the main title of our message amen restoration the need of christian church today restoration the need of christian church today and the text i mean which we already i mean read was esra chapter 1 verses i mean 1 through 4 amen that is very clear the text was esra chapter 1 verses 1 through 4 amen and our topic of today's message is I, as i told you uh, uh, in the in, in the beginning that the areas where the restoration <coughs> is necessary <coughs> in our christian life the areas where the restoration is necessary in our christian life amen so the first area is the restoration from the captivity the first area is the restoration from the captivity <coughs> i'm sorry so the first area where we need the restoration is the restoration from the captivity when we read uh, uh, esra chapter 2 of uh, i mean uh, esra chapter 2 uh, there is a long list of jewish people around uh, around 50000 50000 jewish people who were returning back to jerusalem from the captivity under the leadership of zerubbabel okay so when you read uh, uh, esra chapter 2 there you can see that there are almost 50000 people they were i mean coming back from babylon to jerusalem and uh, uh, it was under the leadership of zerubbabel i mean the, the same thing i told you in the in the previous sunday also and the historical record says that i mean it took almost 4 months for them for a journey to reach jerusalem from babylon almost the, the, the historical records are saying that okay it took for them 4 months of journey to reach jerusalem from babylon i mean that does not permit us to i mean uh, to say that okay i mean this was a, this was a long time but i mean always they take time to be restored i mean you should know one thing you know if you like to come back to god it will take time it will take time amen so we have to come back before that we have to repent about our sins and we have to I mean, think about what happened to us and we have to think about the failures of our life and weakness of our life then only we will be able to come back to the presence of god i mean so anyway i mean time doesn't uh, permit us to read uh, the whole chapter uh, uh, of uh, chapter 2 of the book of esra but uh, i mean for your understanding just we will read esra chapter 2 verses 1 and 2 esra chapter 2 verses 1 and 2 elsa you can read that verse only now these were the people of the province who came up out of the captivity of those of those exiles whom nebuchadnezzar the king of babylon had carried captive to babylonia they returned to jerusalem and juda each to his own town they came with zerubbabel jeshua nehemiah 
Saraya, Rilaya, Mordecai, Bilshan, Mispar, Bigvai, Rahum, and Bana. I mean, so I told you that, uh, I mean, that whole chapter is speaking about all those things, but uh, we don't have time to read all the chapter. It is very clear. I think uh, it is very clear for you that uh, this whole chapter is the record of the Jewish people who returned from Babylon under the leadership of Serubabil. Okay, now uh, let us study about how faithful is God in his words regarding the captivity and restoration of the Jewish people and also to the New Testament believers. Now we are going to the next point. That is how our God is faithful. How our God is faithful in his words. I mean, regarding the captivity and also the restoration of the people of Israel and also to the New Testament believers. I mean, this is very interesting to know that our God is faithful always, and our God is always, I mean, looking for the faithful people. I mean, whenever God says something, he is faithful. Now, first time, we can, we can see, I mean, God's faithfulness in his word. God's faithfulness in his word. I mean, regarding, regarding the punishment or uh, the, regarding the chastisement. So God is always faithful in his words, and promises to his people, both in sustaining and also in blessing, in blessing. Let me tell you one thing. God is always faithful in his word when he is I mean, saying something that is yes to yes and no to no. You know, he's always faithful with his word. I mean, he is giving some, I mean, a prophecy or promise of sustaining or punishment and also about the promise of blessing. When we go through the Bible, especially in the Old Testament, God, God is giving many words to the people of Israel with the different purposes. I mean, you know, sometimes he gives the word of chastisement or the word of, I mean, punishment. And also sometimes he gives the promises of blessing. And we see he has been faithful always in fulfilling his words also. I mean, we have many examples uh, to bring out from the from these portions. I mean, actually, for example, when we read uh, some of the uh, verses from Book of Isaiah, okay, when we read uh, some of the verses from Isaiah, uh, uh, Book of Isaiah, especially uh, maybe a chapter Isaiah chapter six uh, verses uh, eleven and twelve, and also chapter eleven uh, verses eleven and twelve, and also chapter thirty nine. Uh, verses five through seven. So these are the uh, these are the I mean main verses that we can see uh, that uh, I mean God was faithful for the people of God in His Word. I mean so we understand what are the word of God given to the Jews regarding their captivity now. So now uh, let us read only I uh, mean maybe one portion. Maybe uh, we will read Isaiah chapter thirty nine verses five to seven for our understanding. Isaiah chapter thirty nine verses five to seven. Yeah. Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, hear the word of the Lord of hosts. Behold, the days are coming when all that is in your house and that which your fathers have stored up till this day shall be carried to Babylon. Nothing shall be left, says the Lord, and some of your own sons who will come from you, whom you will father, shall be taken away and, and they shall be in, it, in, the, pal in the palace of the king of Babylon. Thank you. Uh, so we do not have uh, more time to read all those portions, but only we read only two verses from Isaiah chapter 39 verses, I mean, five and uh, five, six and seven. Okay. Here we see, I mean, more than a century before the prophet Isaiah had uh, warned the Jews that the people of Judah, I mean, would be taken captive to Babylon and punished for their sins. And we see his prophecy was fulfilled. I mean, we see the fulfillment of, of that prophecy in second uh, in Second Kings chapter twenty four verses ten through sixteen, and also chapter twenty five verses one to twenty one. I mean, so these are the verses we speaks about the fulfillment of the of the I mean prophecy of Isaiah. So we will just read one or two verses only, maybe uh, Second uh, King chapter uh, twenty-four, verse fifteen, and also Second King chapter uh, uh, twenty-five, verses eight and nine. Two verses we will read, uh, then we will move on. And he carried away Jeho 
Achin to Babylon, and the king's mother, the king's wives, his officials, and the chief men of the land he took into the captivity of, of from Jerusalem to Babylon. In the fifth month, on the seventh day of the month, that was the 19th year of King Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, the king of the, of the bodyguard, a servant of the king of Babylon came to Jerusalem, and he burned the house of the Lord and the king's house and all the houses of Jerusalem, every great house he burned down. Okay. So let us now see how God was faithful in his words to the people of Israel. Okay, there is a, there is a list which is given in your screen that uh, I mean it speaks about uh, how God is faithful to the people of Israel in His word. How He is faithful. Now we will go to you know in in, in the, the the list is like this in BC six hundred and five in BC six hundred and five Nebuchadnezzar departed the royal family and took the temple vessels to Babylon. Okay, so th that is the first one in BC six hundred and five. Nebuchadnezzar departed the royal family and took the temple vessels to Babylon. And in uh, BC 597, BC 597, we see that he sent into exile almost 7,000 people or men of might and the thousand craftsmen to, to, to Babylon. Okay, and in, in BC 586, next one is BC 586, 86, he destroyed the temple of Jerusalem and also he exiled the rest of the Jews to Babylon. This is, this is what happened in BC 586. I mean, he destroyed, Nebuchadnezzar destroyed the, the temple of Jerusalem and uh, they, they exiled the rest of the people or the Jews, Jewish people to Babylon. And again, again, when you read uh, Isaiah chapter, uh, Isaiah chapter 44, verse I mean, 28, Isaiah chapter, I mean, 44, verse 28. I mean, prophet Isaiah is prophesying about the return of Jews to Jerusalem with the permission of Cyrus, the king, and that exactly happened in BC 538. We'll read that verse also, Isaiah chapter 44, verse 28. Who says of Cyrus, he is my shepherd, and he shall fulfill all my purpose, saying of Jerusalem, she shall be built, and of, of, and of the temple, your foundation shall be laid. Yes. So here, Isaiah, the prophet, is prophesying about the return of Jewish people to Jerusalem with the permission of Cyrus, the king. And, the, and that was exactly happened in BC 538. So Cyrus, the king, I mean, of Persia, the conqueror of Babylon, he issued a decree that permitted the exiled Jews to return to their land and rebuild their temple. Okay, so Cyrus was giving the permission, you go, you go back to uh, your, 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 your land, Jerusalem, and you can build your temple there, and this is the permission, and this is the decree which is given for you. You can go back to your place. Okay, so why I'm saying this? Because there is a reason. You know, whatever God said and whatever the word of God came to the people of Israel, that was fulfilled. I mean, whenever God says something that was fulfilling, I mean, according to the time and according to the word of God. So just remember one thing that God is faithful to his words always. God is faithful to his words always. Again, let me remind you, I mean, a few more things uh, from book of Jeremiah also uh, to confirm that our God is always faithful in his words and promises. Okay, so in, in the, in the, in the, in the I mean, beginning part, we were thinking about how God is faithful in his word regarding, regarding the punishment and the captivity and uh, the, the, the chastisement. Okay, now we are coming to the next thing that how God is faithful in his words and his promises of blessing. Okay, you read uh, Jeremiah chapter, okay, uh, we have no time to read uh, that portions, but uh, when you read uh, Jeremiah chapter 20 and 21, chapters 20 and 21, we see the prophet Jeremiah for at least 40 years had warned the leaders of Judah that the Babylonian exile was inevitable. So prophet Jeremiah was prophesying and giving a warning for the people that you are going to be in the, in the exile. You are going to be in the captivity of Babylon. And that, that captivity is inevitable for you. And he requested with them to repent about their sins. 
but the leaders of the Jewish people that didn't listen him. In fact, they called Jeremiah as, as a traitor and a false prophet. They were saying, oh, Jeremiah, you, you are now uh, prophesying that, okay, we are going to, uh, we are going to the uh, Babylon as a captives. No, no, that is not going to happen because God is in our side. God is in our side. And whenever, I mean, Jeremiah was speaking and Jeremiah, whenever Jeremiah was uh, uh, preaching or prophesying against those people, they were saying that, okay, okay, you are a false prophet. This is not going to happen for us because you are a, you are a traitor and you are a false prophet. And we see the holy, holy city and the temple were destroyed in BC 586. This is what we see. Whenever God is saying something to the people of God, if they listen that word, I mean, God will change that word. Otherwise, otherwise, if they are repenting about those things, they will be punished. This is what the, we can see that God is faithful in everything. Now, again, in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 10, and also from Daniel chapter 9, verse 2, there are two verses, okay? Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 10, and Daniel chapter 9, verse 2. We'll read that verse also then with God. For thus says the Lord, when 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will visit you and I will fulfill you to my promise and bring you back to, my, to this place. Yeah, Daniel 9, 2. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, perceived in the books the number of years that, according to the word of the Lord to Jeremiah, the prophet, must pass before the end of the desolations of Jerusalem, namely 70 years. You know, what is that? Even Jeremiah and Daniel also announced that the captivity would be for 70 years, 70, 70 years. And we read that exactly happened to them and they were in Babylon for 70 years. I know there are chances that uh, you may be confused with all these things and because this is the historical events which happen with uh, uh, the people of Israel and uh, the dates are there, the years are there and Bible references are there. That's why I'm, I'm screen sharing all these points to you. Uh, I'm screen sharing there and uh, you'll be getting all the details from that screen sharing and you'll be able to write it down. So uh, you know that, uh, I mean, why I was explaining all these historical events, it is because historical events are always believable. Historical events in the Bible are believable. And it's not a myth also. It's not a myth or uh, it's, it's not a made up story. Rather, it's a real story. And that history says our God is faithful in his words regarding the matter of chastisement or punishment or disciplining. Amen. So we believe that God is faithful in his word. How many of you believe that God is faithful in his word? So when you read or listen the historical messages, Try to understand, try to understand that God, our God is God of history. And he is faithful in his words. Amen. So thus far, we have been uh, hearing that our God is faithful in fulfilling his words regarding the punishment and captivity of the people of Israel. But now, let me remind you that our God is always faithful in fulfilling his promises and blessings for the history itself. Hallelujah. You know, when you go through the I mean, history of the people of Israel and the history of the New Testament leaders and the believers, we understand that, I mean, I mean God is always faithful to his promises and blessings from history. I mean, we read in, uh, I mean, we are not going to read that verses, but uh, I mean, in 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 56, 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 56, it says that there has not failed one word of all his good promise. God is giving many promises to the people of God. I mean, nothing is failed. And he is able to fulfill the promises which is given for the people of God. And also, we read Matthew chapter 24, verse 35. Matthew chapter 24, verse 35. Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. How many of you believe that? I mean, God's words are not passing away. I mean, heaven may pass away, yet may pass away, but God's word, I mean, shall not pass away. So we see God promised and fulfilled the promises which was given to Abraham and to Isaac and Jacob. Amen. And he promised and fulfilled the promises which was given for the New Testament church leaders and our forefathers. Hallelujah. And still, even today, God is fulfilling all the promises which is given to you and me. 
you believe that i mean god is fulfilling all the promises i mean all the words of god which is i mean promised to you and me and i know that each one of you might have at least one experience to say that our god is faithful in his words and promises which he promised to you maybe years ago i mean i have seen and we have many experience in my life also you know god has promised many things in our life i mean it was it was something a kind of spiritual or material things or something but god promised us many many times and prophesied us i mean many times many things and god is faithful to 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 promise and i believe that god is going to do that hallelujah if you if you could recollect all those i mean fulfilled fulfillment of god's promises in your personal life i mean and you believe that god has done the miracles in my life and god has i mean i mean i mean uh, did i mean many miracles in my life and god promised me many things and now i know that i mean that is fulfilled and if you believe that i mean god is going to fulfill that i mean promises i request just stand on your feet now hallelujah i mean as i am concluding this message i mean this morning i mean i would request everyone to stand on your feet everyone to stand on your feet just please stand up if you believe that god is going to fulfill the promises which is given for the people of god hallelujah hallelujah i mean i mean you are and say hallelujah and praise the name of the lord for a while hallelujah how many can how many of you can i mean stand there wherever you are in your house i mean just stand up and say praise the lord and praise the name of the lord for a moment because i mean god is faithful Amen. God is faithful. Hallelujah. Worship the Lord for a while. Worship the Lord for a while. Hallelujah. I mean, for a, for a, for a minute, I mean, hallelujah. Remembering the faithfulness of God. Hallelujah. How many of you are remembering the faithfulness of God this morning? Oh, we thank you, Master. 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 Oh, we praise the name of God. Hallelujah. Remember one thing. God is, I mean, faithful. God is faithful in his words. Hallelujah. Even God was, I mean, giving the promises and god was giving the the the, the word of punishment and the and the chastisement and the disciplining uh, to the people of israel god was faithful in his word regarding the punishment and the captivity and also god was saying them you will come back from babylon to jerusalem and you are going to be restored hallelujah and god was able to fulfill his promises which was even for the people of israel hallelujah if you believe that i mean that the promises that which is given to me is going to be fulfilled i mean clap your hands and praise the name of the lord for it thank you master hallelujah we bless your name oh god we bless your name oh god i personally believe that god is going to do the miracles in our life hallelujah i personally believe that i mean god is going to fulfill the promises which is given for the people of god this new year we worship you lord hallelujah thank you master thank you master hallelujah rauda raga jara bala varsham dere bala rauda raga siya rauda bala rauda raga jasham dere bala rauda raga siya hallelujah 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 amen if you taking the message personally in your life hallelujah if you taking the message in your family in your society in your church hallelujah this morning receive that message hallelujah receive that message in the spirit that the bible says that i mean god is going to fulfill the promises for the people of god udara bala vashandara ara bala bala udara vasiya I mean, we are going to see the fulfillment of the promises of God. We are going to see the fulfillment of the promises of God in my life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. I mean, this morning, I strongly believe that our God is faithful to fulfill the promises which is given to us in the new year hallelujah if you believe that receive that word receive that word and believe in your heart and let us pray for a great change and transformation in our life in this new year hallelujah hallelujah let us be i mean restored back to the presence of god and let us i mean desire for that oh lord i need a restoration oh lord oh lord i need a reestablishment of a life hallelujah i mean how many of you believe and how many of you pray this morning i mean when you when you're standing there silently and praying oh lord i need that restoration 
Hallelujah. Just remember what are the promises or what are the words or what are the prophecies that you received in the previous years. That may be in your spiritual life. That may be about your material life. That may be about your job. That may be about your physical condition. That may be about your generation, your children. Whatever it may be, believe this morning, the spirit of the Lord is saying that, I mean, God is faithful in his word. Hallelujah. God is faithful in his word. God is faithful in his promises. Amen. Hallelujah. As we are standing in the presence of God, I request Brother Daniel to lead us in prayer now. And uh, I'm just meditating the word of God, which was coming to us this morning. And we will pray together as we are praying together, remaining in prayer. I request Brother, I mean, Brother Daniel to lead us in prayer. Praise God. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful time you've given us, Lord Jesus, to come together, Lord, hallelujah, as a church, and spend some time, Lord, hallelujah, Lord, worshiping you and listening to uh, your word, Lord, hallelujah, from your servant, Lord, hallelujah, thank you for blessing Pastor, Lord Jesus, to share this message, Lord, hallelujah, thank you, Lord, for um, bringing us all together once again, Lord, hallelujah, to listen to God's word, hallelujah, Lord, Father, there is some... Um, uh, a series of sermons we are going through, Lord Jesus, restoration of the Christians. Um, uh, uh, these days, Lord Jesus, hallelujah, help us to, Lord, have us time. Lord, help us to understand that. Lord, um, help us examine ourselves, Lord, hallelujah, where we need the restoration and what are we lacking, Lord Jesus, what, and help us, Lord Jesus, to uh, renew ourselves, Lord, hallelujah, Lord, Father, we ask you, Lord, Jesus, that you help us renew, Lord, hallelujah, and get back uh, on track, Lord, hallelujah, Lord, Father, give, give us the vision, Lord, hallelujah, help us to see things like you do, Lord, hallelujah, Lord, Father, and bless us with your wisdom, Lord, hallelujah, and help us to do things like you do, Lord, Father, hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord, Father, we Thank you, God, for um, uh, everything, everything what you're doing in our lives. Every thank you for working in our church, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for um, Lord, this time, Lord Jesus. And thank you for helping us learn, Lord Jesus, um, things, Lord. Hallelujah. That we now uh, for this year, Lord. Hallelujah. Help us, Lord. Help, help us to do things that we um, will glorify thy name, Lord Jesus. Help us, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless us. Bless us. As we are entering the new week, Lord, hallelujah, we pray that you bless us and strengthen us, Lord, Father, Father, to um, face the world, Lord, hallelujah, thank you for all the blessings we pray for uh, our church and everybody in our church, thank you for uh, our pastor, Lord, hallelujah, we pray for all those who are traveling at this time, Lord, hallelujah, we pray for all those who are seeking visa, Lord, hallelujah, we thank you for all those who are seeking for jobs, Lord, hallelujah, thank you. We know, Lord, this year is going to be a blessing to our church, Lord, hallelujah. We know that you're going to work wonders in our church, Lord, hallelujah. Help us, Lord, once again, Lord, hallelujah. Help us to humble ourselves, Lord, and examine ourselves, Lord Jesus, where we need restoration. And Lord, help us to get back on track, Lord, hallelujah. Help us to be like what you want us to be, Lord, hallelujah. Help us to, Lord Jesus, live a life that will please you, Lord Jesus, and live a life that will reflect you to others wherever we are, Lord Jesus. Thank you for all the blessings. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you. And may God bless you all. 